MG Ryan back with you. And today we're gonna to be talking about oil pans. More specifically, controlling the oil within the oil pan with a baffle. Let's get going. So we're getting ready to finally build my engine for my 74 BGT. Now I'm not gonna get into exactly what we're doing with the engine in this video. Uh, let's just uh, suffice to say that it's not going to be just a very simple, mild perf performance build. It's going to be a lot more than that. We'll talk about that in a future video when we actually start the build. But in a, if you were watching me, oh gosh, a year and a half, two years ago when I first tore my engine down and then tore this one down to send off the machine shop, um you'll know that it wasn't too pretty inside i had three failed lifters uh broken main cap all the main bearings were trashed the rod bearings didn't look all that great and the motor had about ten thousand miles on it but there were a lot of firsts on that engine for me personally i went kind of crazy trying to take rotating mass out of it and um, so far that I actually ended up putting a lighter, a lightened harmonic bouncer on it. So I might have not been controlling the harmonics of the engine very well, but um, might have also been an oil control problem. So I'm doing a number of different things, a couple of different things to mitigate those issues, potential issues. Like, um, so what we're gonna be talking today is oil control. Because after looking at everything, uh, I've had a couple different people give their input. My brother, who also is a mechanic and uh, races, or used to race in round track racing before the track shut down, believes an oil control problem or oil foaming issue might have been my problem. I've had other opinions, but we're going to try to mitigate a number of things. Make sure this thing's safe goes together, doesn't have any of these problems. So we're gonna baffle the oil pan. Now, the oil pan that I had on it was baffled. It was baffled with the special tuning baffle exactly as it was done in the special tuning manual right here. That baffle basically looks just like this. I can't show you the oil pan because it's currently bolted to the engine that's in my car and I'm driving it. So there's basically three different oil pans that were used on the MGB throughout the years. You have the three main oil pan, which has 19 holes around it. And this is shaped a bit differently than the five main. This is an earlier five main bearing. It only has 18 holes. And you can actually see the difference in the hole pattern here. This has more of a flat spot here. This is more rounded, but the difference in the hole spacing too. So these are completely non-interchangeable, which means I don't want to look at this one. So now you got the two different general five main bearing engine pans. This is from a later pan. You'll notice it's got a little bit of a step up here and the corner has been cut off. Now this corner was cut off from my understanding for access to be able to put bolts in the, the uh, torque converter on automatic bees, which was something that they were thought was going to go all over in America very well and obviously didn't. But the oil capacity of this one is roughly a half a quart less than this one. So this is what we're going to start with. So here's the page out of the special tuning manual. So years ago when I did the baffle of my other oil pan, I just followed this as the guide. So I made this exactly like this, except for some slight variation because the oil pan on the five main is slightly different than the three main, which this is the dimensions for the three main. So this changes slightly around this curve. 
Otherwise, I did it exactly the same as that. But the big issue here is, if you look at these dimensions, it says here two and a quarter inches up from the bottom after you add the one inch strip. So that would make this an inch and a quarter off the bottom of the oil pan according to the manual if you just do that. But it doesn't say anything else in the manual about where to put that if you do not add the one inch strip. Now I don't think I actually did it at an inch and a quarter, but I honestly do not remember. More than likely I put it in there just to where it wouldn't go past any higher than the radius here. Now, I don't remember with it turning up if I put the top of the lip at the radius or the bottom lip of the radius and then fold it forward. But that would have put this right around two inches, which is pretty much exactly the depth of the screen here. So when I did this way back then, I just went with the manual, basically didn't really stop and think about it too much but now I'm thinking about it more. If you look at the depth of the oil within the oil pan, this is the oil level right here. The depth of that would be about two and a quarter inches. So if this is in there at any less than two and a quarter inches deep, then oil's always gonna be sitting on top of the baffle. So any oil that's on top of the baffle isn't gonna be controlled by the baffle. So you have to remember that when oil is hot and the, the oil thins out a lot and it behaves pretty much like water, it sloshes around an awful lot. So when you dive into a corner really hard, that oil is gonna to wanna to slosh up with centrifugal force. Now, if you go into a corner hard enough, it can slosh up far enough to actually uncover the pickup here and start sucking a little bit of air. That's not good. Now, the other thing to think about is the rotating assembly here as everything rotates. If the oil sloshes far enough up the side of the block here, the edge of the rod could get into the oil and cause foaming. So basically, we want to make sure that this is higher than the oil level. And if you do any research on the web, you'll find that anybody who ex actually explains it always says that they try to put it above the oil. So actually the special tuning manual, the way it reads, isn't the greatest way to do it. It does help a lot though. It does uh, make a difference. So one of the other factors you want to think about is you want it sealed really well on the outer edges because any gaps here, oil is going to come up through there. Now, the way the special tuning manual has this, look how big of an opening there is for the dipstick. That's quite a big opening. A lot of oil can get past that during a hard left-hand corner. So one of the things I want to do is make that smaller. Now I have been thinking about this in a couple different ways of how I want to do this. Do I just want to stick with that and improve it? Um, I was thinking originally of a modified version of this, but kind of using this as a bit of a template here. This is a purchased one that I bought from Improved Racing for my LS1 going on my other MG. So this has baffles in it that go around the oil pump pickup with trap doors that allow the oil in, but then doesn't allow the oil to escape very easily, keeping it around the pickup so you don't suck air. And that's one of the issues with an LS is um, they can suck a little bit of air, like autocrossing and stuff. And and lower and reduce the life of the bearings and stuff. So not only have I stopped and thought about how I might do it, but I also took some time to do some research. You know, like how did Huffaker deal with it when he was racing? 
um, how are other racers dealing with it by whatever information I can actually find on the web and pictures and stuff I can find. And I think I've actually decided on a way that I'm going to do this. My only question is I'm trying to decide, do I want to increase the capacity or not? I don't want to go any deeper with the oil pan. I really don't want to go any wider and make it harder to get to the bolts. Um, so that would leave go, making this go forward a little bit. And there is room here. How far can I go? Well, I say generally up to an inch and a half. I'd like to take a few measurements on my car first before I make a final decision on what I'm going to do. And the biggest reason I'm thinking about doing that is because I want to be able to set the oil pan on here and be able to see what's going on inside. And if this is cut off, I can get in there and see what's going on so that I can actually make the hole for the dipstick as small as necessary and the hole here as small as necessary and positioned as well as I can possibly positioning it. And I'm also thinking about changing the pickup here, making this smaller so that this hole doesn't have to be so big. All right, so after checking the car, there's plenty of room here to, to make this bigger. I decided I'm gonna go with one inch. Now I've got this marked across here because that puts me in this flat here. And then I got that mark here and here. This is the strip I'll be taking out and sliding this forward. That gets me off of this radius. And before I get to this radius, I won't have to work anything. And I'm not doing this so much to add capacity, so it doesn't matter how far I take it forward. But if I'm gonna cut this out to get in there and, and look, I might as well add some capacity. Now I went ahead and mark this on the inside right here because it's easier to mark on the inside and do a consistent mark than across here. So I can just cut it through this way and then cut this through this way. Now, when I'm cutting it here, they make these in a couple different thicknesses. Like this one's 1 16th inch, but the one I got on here is 040 or 40 thousandths. The thinner blade is the one I'm going to use because that way when I go cut across here, I'm not building as much of a gap there make it a little easier for me to weld that up later. Now that we get this all cut out, I've done some deburring here. And of course the idea here basically is just, we cut it off of here, I slide it forward to there and we fill in a strip here. Now that's going to have to wait till later because I want to work with all of the baffling and stuff here first before this gets welded in. And because that gives me plenty of room to work in here to make some measurements and marks and not have to try to go through the cylinder down the cylinder bores or anything to do it all. It's a lot more access. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is modifying this. Now the reason this is as big as it is from my understanding is basically because it was made for a production car and it has to be able to work in multiple conditions even in like sub-zero weather. So if you are driving these cars in zero degree weather as daily drivers, if you have any moisture within the oil, ice can build up onto this, reducing the amount of screen you have available. So they make it this large to combat that, those kinds of issues. So the first thing I need to do is basically just take this thing apart. So I'm gonna grind the outer edge here and uh, get this where it's folded over off. 
So now I got that ring cut off there. So now we got two parts. Now I just gotta clean this part up and decide exactly where I'm gonna cut it and how big I'm gonna actually make it. So as usual, when I start thinking about things like this and trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it, I tend to not turn the camera on for some reason. But this is what I ended up coming up with. So basically what I did was I just, this bracket here I wanted to keep, which is what keeps that from getting, pushing all the way against the tube here. So I welded the inside of it and cut it as close as I could to the ends of there and basically made it square. So I cut a little bit off of this end and a little bit of that flat end. And then bent this into a square, trimmed it off, put it on there and crimped it around. And as a comparison to what it used to be, this is the ring that I cut off of it. So that's how much smaller I made it. Is it a huge amount smaller? No, I could go smaller than that if I wanted to. But, you know, I think w without trying to reinvent the wheel and do a lot more cutting and welding and stuff for this, that's, you know, about as, as small as I'm going to go. So I'm going to take that and we're going to move forward from there. So I went ahead and got this bolted onto the bottom of the oil pump sitting in the engine. Now you can tell that since this, this sits at an angle and since it is square now, that's going to mean a little more trial and error or a little more measuring to get it right to get the hole around here as tight as we can get it. But you can see with this how much smaller we can actually make that hole. So since I did leave this intact completely, doesn't change the thickness of this. So the relationship of this to the oil pan doesn't actually change any. All we're doing is changing the size of this so that the uh, baffle can be tighter and do a better job controlling the oil. Now this project's going to take more than one video, obviously but the videos are probably not going to end up being back to back because I will be working on this probably a little over a little bit of time and going back and forth between some of my other stuff. So look forward to future installments of this to see how it all comes together.